The design was developed on CAD so that templates could be produced for lost foam castings. The templates for the drill motor mount were printed out onto card and glued with Pritt stick to two pieces of foam for the motor mount rings. A hot wire was used to cut the foam with the card templates acting as a guide for the hot wire. A separate spacing piece was cut and the two rings joined together using hot glue. A white foam sprue was hot glued to the assembly so as to feed the molten aluminium to the bottom of the pan. The hot wire cutter was run into the center to remove a disc of foam from each motor mounting flange. The entry cut was covered with masking tape. To ensure a complete fill, a header ring was used above the sprue when the foam was buried in the sand and the molten aluminium poured. Separate templates were printed for the top and side of the drill head. Using the card as a guide, the plan view was cut first. The card for the side elevation was then cut into three pieces and these were glued to the side and were used to guide the hot wire cutter. Two D-shaped pieces of card were cut out and glued to foam blanks. Then the two pieces were cut out and glued in place to the drill head with PVA wood glue. PVA glue was also used to form fillets. A white foam sprue was again hot glued to the assembly to feed molten aluminium to the bottom of the pattern. A header ring was again used above the sprue. The drill motor mount was bored to a good fit to the drill body and the dovetails machined together with a groove to take the drive rack. The clamping flanges were slotted with a slitting saw and the clamping screw holes were drilled and tapped. The drill head dovetails were machined and gib screws and the gib strip were added. A lost foam brass blank was cast and machined to size for the rack. A HSS tool blank was ground to fly cut the rack teeth in the blank. The rack blank was then mounted vertically on the milling machine and the rack teeth cut. Checking the spur gear to rack meshing. The rack is fitted to the drill motor mount casting. 
the pinion gear keyway planing cutter. Planing the keyway. The finished keyway. The small gear will be separated to become the rack pinion. The feed lever drive boss was mounted in the adjustable angle indexing head to drill and tap the three holes for the handle rods. The brass bearing blank for the feed lever. The blank was mounted in the digital indexing rotary table to mill the adjusting slots. As a long series 4mm slot bit was not available, an old broken 4mm HSS drill was brazed to a piece of steel rod sharpened and used as a slot drill. The finished bearing block with the rack pinion mounted. The bearing is eccentric to allow for mesh adjustment so as to remove the gear to rack backlash. A return spring is required for the feed lever. A clamping block was machined to firmly hold the 2mm piano wire to the mandrel for winding. A piece of scrap rod was grooved as a guide for the piano wire during winding. The spring was wound in the lathe by hand rotating the headstock spindle. The change gears were set to 2mm pitch. The mandrel was mounted in the four jaw chuck and sized using the tables in machinery's handbook to give a spring outside diameter of 25mm. The wire guide was mounted in the tool post, positioned with the saddle to guide the wire and the lead screw engaged. At the end of the first turn, a small adjustment of the guide position with the compound ensures the turn clears the free end of the spring. After 11 turns the spring winding tension is released and the spring expands to its finished diameter. The spring was designed to give a minimum of 7 pound inch of torque at 240 degrees of deflection. The first base plate lost foam casting failed to fill completely. The second casting was successful and the top, bottom and all sides were skimmed with a fly cutter. The arc on the base plate was machined on the rotary table and a lost foam boss cast and machined for the pillar mounting. A trial assembly of the parts so far. The completed pillar drill. Trying the drill for the first time, drilling a printed circuit board. The drill bit is a 0.8mm HSS drill. These old eyes needed more light to position the drill bit, so lead illumination was added. <laughs> 